This dates back, now this is so general, but thousands of years ago in Saudi Arabia, this is the first image of cave art that was found. Um, and what's interesting is that the, the dogs are actually on leashes. So it goes to show you that even then, man was trying to tame sort of a wild beast, a wild animal, by using, by using a leash. And it's estimated that this artwork is between six to 12,000 years old. Uh, they use carbon dating. 12,000 years ago, BCE, which stands for Before Common Era, um, in Siberia they had found the remains of a man and a small puppy, which shows you that although uh, humans have found a bond with animals, sadly when the human or the owner had passed away, the animal was killed and buried alongside it. So that's a, um, but that talks to, to our relationship with animals, specifically with dogs, dates back 12,000 years. So it's pretty interesting. Um, and and not as food, the skeletal remains were intact. Um, so it suggests that they were used as working dogs or uh, guardians and not used as food, at least in that area of the world at that time. Of course, in ancient Egypt, you might be familiar with the jackal, which is used as a head on a funerary amulet. Um, they, this is a link between dogs and gods, which we'll see a few of that. And this is the first example that I found dating back to 600 BCE or BC. And this amulet was used as a guide through the Hall of Truth where the soul was judged. So it was with the Pharaoh and they believed that the dog was the uh, vessel or the carrier of the soul and brought, and brought to, to uh, the, where the judgment took place. And this is also different images of a jackal. And on the right is a pharaoh being mummified and the organs being removed and put in canopic jars with jackal heads. And the jackal is holding up the heart of the pharaoh, which will be judged by Osiris, which is one of the gods. So the domesticated dogs in ancient Egypt were buried with great ceremony, and they were highly value, valued in their society. In fact, um, they were also mummified. Some of the highly regarded dogs of the pharaoh would also be mummified and put in the in the pyramids. And they, the tradition of the time was that the ancient Egyptians shaved their eyebrows in memoriam and as a sign of respect. They also did that with cats. So cats were very revered in their society, but I would say dogs more so. Then on to ancient Greece. We have an early mosaic dating back 560 BC. And this mosaic was the early, one of the earliest evidence of a dog collar in this part of the world. Um, so the cave art was Saudi Arabia, and this is Greece. And this leash is, seems quite skinny, but in fact the style of the time was very thick. And it was also studded with bronze or copper. And the reason for that is because they were so protective of their own dogs that they were scared that the dog might be attacked by a sort of a, a wild animal. Uh, and so the studs on the collar was to protect the neck uh, from being attacked. And also just, uh, uh, it just evidence that animals were becoming domesticated and started to be treated more of like a family pet. And they were thought of in ancient Greece as a very alert genius. They really elevated the dog to a high status. Um, and then on to Italy. Now this is in Pompeii. I'm not clear if this was um, covered in the soot of the, the volcano in Pompeii, uh, but this is a house of, 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 a, of a writer, and his name is The Poet. So it's a very famous sort of a tourist spot in Pompeii, but as I said, I'm not really clear if it was destroyed because of time or because of the, you know, the, the disaster in Pompeii. And um, this mosaic is a warning, and it's most likely a Neapolitan Mastiff, which is an Italian breed, and the underneath, I'm sorry it's cut off, it's 
odd. It's not cut off on my slide, but it's cut off here on the projector. And it, say, it says Cave Canaan, a Canaan meaning dog. And it, it means sort of a warning that beware of dog. This is our earliest um, beware of dog sign. We should get one for our little chihuahua. <laughs> Cave Canaan. <laughs> Um, does anyone know who this might be? This is the two founders of, well, the one founder of Rome. Interesting story. This, these are twins that are named Romulus and Remus, and these twins were given up at birth. This is a story. This is from ancient um, Rome and Roman times. This is a, most likely a myth. But the, the boys were given up and put in a basket and sent down the river Tiber, similar to the story of Moses. And in that basket, they were found by a female wolf, which nursed them and um, told, being, told they were in uh, their toddler years. And they were found by a shepherd, which is evident in the painting on the left. And this shepherd raised them. And when they were adults, sadly, the boys were in an argument, and Romulus killed Remus, and Romulus went on to found the city that they were found in as infants, where the, the female wolf had found them in a basket, and he found that area, Rome, he founded that as, and named it after himself, Rome. And so that statue is, uh, if you've been to Rome, you can find that image. Um, it's very popular. On to ancient China, where the food dogs are very popular guardians outside of uh, businesses and homes and places of worship. And these food dogs are actually not dogs; they are lions. Fu, the real the word in Chinese is shi shi, and that actually directly translates to um, stone lion. And you can um, tell the sex of these uh, food dogs by their mouths. The left one is the female, the mouth is open, and underneath her paw is, I know it doesn't look like it, but it, it is actually a, a puppy. So on the left is the female, which is guarding, guarding, uh, guarding her puppy, and to the right is a closed mouth food dog or stone lion, which holds a, a symbol of the world. And that is the, the symbol for masculinity. So yin and yang, and they suggest that the mouth being open and closed is also uh, the suggesting the breath cycle of om. So it's sort of interesting. Uh, dogs in ancient China, um, they have, there's there's really a lot of information, but I'm, I'm going to, with the fear of boring you to death, I'll tell you the short version of something called the Great Race, which is featured here. And these, you're seeing 13 animals. Um, there are 12 on the top, and the cat is on the lower right. Uh, the story behind this is there was a jade emperor who would wanted to honor the animals and give the animals a year of their own, uh, starting at the new year. And the jade emperors told the animals to meet him by the river and swim across the river. And whoever come, the, 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 um, the fastest animal um, would become the first one uh, to have their own year. And then those to follow would have their own year. Well, these animals all showed up, all 13. The cat and the rat. Uh, I'm going to use this pointer. The cat and the rat here convinced the ox to use the ox's head because uh, they were not able, they knew right away they were not able to cross the river. So the dumb ox decided to allow them to hitch a ride. Well, soon when all of these animals jumped in, the cat got spooked and scared and jumped off and never did cross the river. And all these animals did swim across. The ox was the first one, but right before he was about to hit land, the rat tricked him and jumped onto land. And so as of now and then, starting then, the rat has his first, uh, it, the rat is the first year of the cycle, the year of the rat, followed by the ox, followed by the, 
very dexterous, great swimmer of the tiger, followed by the rabbit who hopped along on sort of like lily pads. And the dragon was a little bit slower than you might think, being that dragons usually have wings, because he saw that there was a fire and used his breath to put out the fire. Doesn't make a lot of sense, because usually they breathe <laughs> fire. But he did make it across, so that's the year of the dragon. Um, then the uh, year of the snake, and the year of the horse who was walking behind, and then the sheep, the monkey, and the rooster all took a raft and came in in that order. And this is the dog right here, number 11. And they say that the dog, followed by the pig, and the dog came in number 11 because he had spent time uh, playing in the sun <laughs> and playing in the water. So the dog is number 11 in the Chinese um, cycle, Chinese zodiac. Uh, this, is, this is very interesting to me. This is a winter constellation um, of the northern sky. And the dog, Canis, um, major and minor, they have two basically of constellations named after them. The larger one being Canis Major, major which is said to resemble a dog following the hunter Orion. And it's the brightest sky, brightest star in the night sky, which is called Sirius. And it's appropriately known as the dog star. Canis Minor is only two stars, but it's also named after um, dogs. So that was ancient history. Now I'm going to move on to something. I'm going to move ahead a little bit, fast forward, to medieval times. And this is a close-up of a feast that was painted in, um, in a duration of four years in 1412. And what you see here is um, sort of aristocracy in medieval times that had dogs as pets, but also as guardians and hunting dogs. 